If you have not heard, the Raspberry Pi 2 was released last month. This is an upgrade to the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, but it contains two new features, just two, but they're important ones, so let's check them out. I've put a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus next to a Raspberry Pi 2, and as you can tell, they look about the same. Both have the four USB ports, an Ethernet port, a combination audio-visual jack, camera interface for the flex cable that connects to the Pi camera, HDMI out, a micro USB port for power, 40 GPIO pins, and the same four mounting holes. There's also a display port over here for another flex cable. And if you turn it over, there's a micro SD card on the underside of both of them. This is for storing your image of your operating system and any other files you want to keep on the Pi. Now let's take a look at the new features. If you look at the old Model B Plus, you'll see that it's a package-on-package -package assembly for the main processor. And this includes the RAM and the Broadcom system on a chip, SOC. However, if we flip over the version 2, the RAM has been moved to the back side, and they've upgraded from 512 megabytes of RAM to a full 1 gigabyte. In the Model B Plus, the Broadcom system on chip was located underneath the RAM in the POP assembly. But if we flip over the 2, the Broadcom chip stays in the same place, but it is no longer a package-on-package -package assembly. Probably the biggest change is that they upgraded the processor on the B Plus from a Broadcom BCM2835 to a Broadcom BCM2836 on the version 2. Now, what does that one number mean? Well, a few things. First of all, you get a little bit more speed. Instead of 700 megahertz, it's now 900 megahertz. Additionally, they've upgraded from a single core processor to a quad core processor. That's much better for multitasking. And finally, the version of ARM architecture was upgraded. We went from an ARM v6 to an ARM v7. What do we mean when we talk about ARM architecture? ARM is a design for processors, and it's very popular among a lot of distributions for embedded Linux. However, many of those distributions require ARM v7 and above. What that means is that many of those could not run on the old Raspberry Pi. So, custom versions of Linux like Raspbian needed to be created in order to run on the Pi. But moving to ARMv7 means it opens up this new world of possibilities for running a lot more distributions of Linux and Windows 10. I don't happen to have a copy of Windows 10 lying around to test, but I know that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has promised us some sort of free working version of Windows 10 to run on the new Raspberry Pi. A while ago, we made a three-part series on getting started with Raspberry Pi. You can still follow the steps in this series, but you'll need to download the newest version of Raspbian if you want to use the new Raspberry Pi 2. Also, there's two quick changes that we have to make in order for the tweeting temperature sensor to work. In the second episode of the Getting Started with Raspberry Pi series, we have you go to the Twitter page, dev.twitter.com, and click on your icon and go to My Apps in order to access your applications that tie into Twitter. However, you'll notice that there's no more My Apps under the icon. Instead, you'll have to browse all the way to the bottom and click on Manage My Apps. From there, you'll get taken to your Twitter Apps page. In the third episode, we activated I squared C in the kernel. The first step of doing this is that we commented out sections in raspiblacklist.conf. You can skip this part because there's no longer a raspiblacklist.conf. However, we do still need to go into Etsy modules and add the lines i2c-bcm2708 and i2c-dev in order to enable those modules. And the last thing that we need to do, which was not covered in those episodes, is add a couple of lines to boot config.txt. This is something that was newly added to Raspbian in order to get I squared C working. Scroll all the way down and at the bottom, add the lines dt param equals i2c1 equals on and dt param equals i2c underscore arm equals on. And with those changes, we can run the exact same Python script. Here we have the working temperature monitor that then tweets from the Raspberry Pi. And if we go to my Twitter page, you can see that it's been posted. The question is then, is the Raspberry Pi 2 a worthwhile upgrade from the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus? You'll notice that both of them are the same price, so they're both incredibly cheap. However, you get a good deal more CPU power out of the newer version and twice the RAM. It also opens up the possibility of more variants of Linux and other operating systems. 
So if you find yourself running out of resources or you want to try some new variant of Linux or possibly even Windows 10, then I would consider it a worthwhile upgrade. If you're just getting started with Raspberry Pi, remember you're going to need a few accessories like a monitor, keyboard, mouse, HDMI cable, some way to power it. And if you want to learn more about it, check out our three-part Getting Started with Raspberry Pi series to learn about how to connect it to a sensor, read some temperature, post to Twitter, and a little bit about Python. Thanks for watching.